Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Passion Academy course where I'm talking today about how you can measure the impact of index changes in SQL Server. Imagine you have a SQL Server workload and to improve the speed of some select queries you are adding additional non-clustered indexes. As long as the query optimizer chooses these new indexes, your select queries will definitely speed up. But what about your white workload? When you are changing the columns that are part of the new non-clustered indexes, SQL Server also has to maintain these additional indexes. And this maintenance activity costs you some time for your white workload. So the question is how you can measure the overall impact of such index changes. In this SQL Passion Academy course, I will show you a proven technique how you can measure index changes. Before we go down the details, I want to give you some information about my person. My name is Klaus Aschenbrenner and I'm the CEO and founder of SQL Passion a European-based company specialized in high-quality SQL Server consulting and training. I'm an international conference speaker and you can meet me the whole year at international conferences like SQL Bits, SQL Bass, SQL Valley, where I'm speaking about SQL Server performance problems and how you can troubleshoot and resolve them. Since September, 2012, I'm also a Microsoft Certified Master for SQL Server 2008, which is the highest technical certification that you can currently achieve. You can find further information about my company SQL Passion and my person on sqlpassion.ad. You can also follow me on Twitter and watch free SQL Server trainings on my own YouTube channel. Before we look now at the agenda for the next 60 minutes, we will switch over to SQL Server where I will show you with a very simple demo the challenge that we are trying to solve in this course. In this demo, I want to show you with a simple example how negatively a new non-clustered index can influence your white workload. I'm using here the AdventureWorks 2012 database and I'm also enabling the session option Statistics.io so that SQL Server will tell us for a given query how many page reads were necessary. The next step, I'm running here a simple query against the table person.address which produces an execution plan with a bookmark lookup because the column postal code is not part of the non-clustered index that the query optimizer has chosen. As you can see from the messages window, the query produced 19 logical reads. It's now very easy to improve the performance of that query by creating a covering non-clustered index like I'm doing that in the next step. When we now rerun our query, you can see that our execution plan is straightforward and the logical reads dropped down to 2. Impressive, isn't it? But hey, here we have just concentrated on one specific select query, we have not thought about our white workload. Of course, when we include columns in the leaf level of a non-clustered index, SQL Server also has to maintain these columns transparently when we execute a white workload. So what I'm doing here in the next step, I'm just running an update statement which changes the column postal code. For this query, SQL Server has to change the column postal code three times, once in the clustered index and additionally in two non-clustered indexes. One of these two non-clustered indexes is the one that we have created earlier for improving the select query. So when we run that update statement, you can see from the execution plan that SQL Server has to change, in addition to the clustered index, the two non-clustered indexes. The query itself produced 98 logical reads. To compare how much the maintenance of this additional non-clustered index costs us, I'm just dropping that index in the next step. And afterwards, I'm just rerunning our update statement again. And as you can see now from the messages window, SQL Server only needs 67 logical reads. 
the query performance improved by around 30%. That's the traditional double-edged sword of indexing. You are improving at one hand the read performance of your workflow and on the other hand you are just degrading your write performance. Because every additional non-clustered index is a pure overhead for SQL Server that has to be maintained. The question is now, how can you make sure for a production workload which consists of a huge amount of different read and write queries if an additional non-clustered index is a good or bad one? So let's now switch over to the slides and have a look on the agenda.